Welcome. Welcome. I'll be your host. My name is Leslie Storms, and I've been on a path toward healing most of my entire life. But today, I am so happy that you have joined with me. We are going to be talking about betrayal. And so I always like to start things with, let's just say. So let's just say that you had a friend and you felt that they betrayed you. And it took you a while, many years to realize, and it took the incidents of a trail for you to realize that you had been playing a part too within the relationship. So there's always a pattern within a relationship. And if we can identify the relationship pattern, then we can choose to shift our behavior, our thoughts, our actions, which will create and cause the relationship pattern to shift as well. Because when one person changes, the whole system, which two people in a relationship is a system, has to change. Let's just say that once the betrayal happened, you realized that this person, this friend, had only been reaching out when they were in an uncomfortable place in their own life. Some part of you had been in an agreement in a relationship pattern to support this person during times of trial. But when the person came to a place of feeling more confident, more joyful, they distanced from you and they even turned their back on you. And so what can we learn from betrayal? It's vitally important that we allow ourselves to feel whatever it is that we're feeling when we feel we have been betrayed, making space for the hurt, the disappointment, the anger, the sadness. And then once we start to process that and we feel ready, we can move into looking deeply into ourselves to see what part we played within the relationship. And going forward, as we formulate and create new relationships with other people, can we avoid that same situation repeating itself? Can we show the universe that we learned the lesson, that we received the upload, so that we don't have to go through that type of pain and suffering again? And something else that I love to do this was taught to me by the most beautiful woman, Mama Medicine, is when we feel a sense of betrayal, it's often depicted as being stabbed in the back. Metaphorically, energetically, we have been stabbed in the back. Now, this stabbing in the back, it's in our mind, in our body, and in our spirit. And so something that we can do is imagine removing this energetic stabbing that has happened out of our system. And the way in which we do this is we take a nice big full inhalation. We sort of crunch over and crouch over. We would be standing up and then on an exhale, we whoo, and imagine pushing that betrayal out of the mind. See it leaving the back of the body, the back of the heart. And you would do this three times, one time for the mind, one time for the body, and lastly, for the spirit. Something else that can be very helpful is when we feel we are ready, but only when we are ready, we can make an offering to that person because any time that someone betrays us, they have betrayed themselves. And so they have a lesson that they're going through as well. When we are living from the space of the heart, important 
that we realize that another person's suffering is our suffering too. What can we do to help to alleviate that person's suffering? We can make an offering to them. We could do an ritual for them. We could pray for them. If we don't feel like praying for them or prayer is not in our practice, that's fine. But if we don't feel like praying for them, then we can pray for ourselves to want to pray for them. We would simply say to ourselves, I don't feel ready to pray for this person, but I'm willing to see it differently. I'm willing to hold this differently. I'm willing to try to open my heart to this person. And once we can open our heart to this person, the real medicine of betrayal is beginning. Forgiveness. Forgiving the other person, forgiving ourselves for anything that we feel that maybe we did to set up this situation, this relational pattern that has come to us right in front of us for us to grow and for us to learn and expand. And lastly, I would say it can be a beautiful experience to journal about betrayal and what betrayal has to teach us. Anytime we go through feeling betrayed or being betrayed, we can become a more compassionate being, a more aware being. We can avoid repeating those same patterns. We can avoid passing them on to our children and to others and to future generations. This is the beauty and again, the nectar, the sweetness of betrayal. It gives us this gift of growing into a more compassionate person, presence. We can become a flower unto others, a beautiful, fragrant, fragrant flower. Allow yourself to grow stronger through adversity and emerge a wiser and more resilient version of yourself. Facing betrayal is undoubtedly challenging, but it doesn't have to define who we are nor our future. When we create space for our own pain and we seek help from others when we need, ask for help, ask for support, and when we practice self-compassion and compassion toward the other person, forgiveness comes, growth comes, and we are able to navigate this path with grace and emerge on the other side with a renewed strength and wisdom. And remember, healing takes time, but you have the power within you to transform betrayal into a catalyst for compassion, love, and growth. Thank you for joining and remember to subscribe.